In this video, I'd like to talk about finding the period of sinusoidal functions when we're given a picture of the graph. And let's start by looking at a picture of the definition of period, as well as the other key features, just so that we can remind ourselves what the period actually is. So let me paste that in. And we can see in this picture the three key features of these sinusoidal functions where the midline is the horizontal line that goes right through the middle of the function. The amplitude is just the distance from the midline to the maximum or from the midline to the minimum value. And the period is essentially the section of the sinusoidal cur curve that's unique and will repeat infinitely many times. Since after we go this distance, one period, the function will basically just repeat this exact same part. Notice that during the period, we go up to the maximum, come back down through the midline, down to the minimum, and then back up to the same starting y value, and then it starts to go up again, just like we had over here, and it will repeat this process infinitely many times. So the period is just this horizontal distance that measures exactly one of these repetitions where, again, we are looking at a unique section of the curve. And for this example problem, we were given this trigonometric function, this sinusoidal curve, which could be either the sine or the cosine function. We are told it has a maximum point at this coordinate point here and a minimum point at this coordinate. So we have this point here and this point here. Now the period, remember, covers one unique section of the curve. And essentially, if we pick the starting point at let's say the maximum, the period will be the distance from one maximum point to the next one. Though we could do the same thing for the minimum values. It could be the distance from one minimum point to its next one. And in this case, we aren't told what two maximums or two minimums are, but we are told a maximum and a minimum. And what we can notice if we assume this is one period here is that the minimum point is exactly halfway through the period. The distance from the minimum to the maximum is the same in both directions. So the distance from a maximum point to a minimum point, this horizontal distance here, this is one half of a period. So if we can figure out that horizontal distance, then we can figure out the total period by just doubling everything. And the way to figure out this horizontal distance is to notice the x coordinates of each of these points. We have an x value of 4.7 for the minimum, and for the x value of the maximum point, we have a value of 1.5. So if we find their, dis their difference, 4.7 minus 1.5, we will figure out what half the period is. And we can compute that. 4.7 minus 1.5 would just be 3.2. And like I mentioned, this is half the period. So to figure out the period, we need to take this number of 3.2 and multiply it by two. We just add it to itself and we find a value of 6.4. And we can visually check this by determining what the X coordinate of the next maximum point should be by taking 1.5 and adding one period to that, 6.4, and we would get 7.9. And we can see that this maximum point here would roughly have an x value right at 7.9, which allows us to feel confident that the period of this sinusoidal function is 6.4 units. And the key takeaway is that over a period, there is quite a bit of symmetry. Notice that if we were given the maximum value and let's say the value of this point on the midline, that this is exactly half the distance to the minimum value. And since the distance to the minimum value from the maximum is half of a period, and this point's right in the middle of that, this distance right here would be one fourth of a period. 
And we can use symmetry like this to answer further problems involving the period.